So a couple of weeks ago, uh, I got my hands on the HP ZBook and did a video uh, overview of it and tore the back off of it and just looked at the internals. And you can find that video up here on this card and also link it in the description down below. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks. Uh, so I did benchmarks on the ZBook 15 as well as the Lenovo P50, uh, which is Lenovo's equivalent offering to the ZBook 15, as well as the Lenovo P500, which, which is a desktop workstation, um, just to give a point of reference. All right, so let's take a quick look at the specs before we jump into the benchmark numbers. Uh, so both the HP ZBook and the P50 are running mobile Xeon processors, uh, four core, eight thread. Uh, their HP is running the 1545M, whereas the Lenovo is running the 1505M. Uh, so the only difference is the clock speeds. Um, HP is running at 2.9 gigahertz base and a 3.8 boost. And the Lenovo is running at 2.8 base with a 3.7 boost. Uh, so like I said, only 100 megahertz difference between the two of them. They're both running 32 gigabytes of um, DDR4 ECC memory at 2133. Uh, they're both running 512 gig solid state drives. Uh, the ZBook's running an NVMe M.2 drive, whereas the Lenovo is running a 512 gig uh, two and a half inch SATA drive. And they're both running the Quadro M2000M mobile uh, Quadro card. The P500, is running the Xeon E5 1650, so that's going to be a 6 core 12 thread part, uh, running at 3.5 base and 3.8 boost, uh, 48 gigs of DDR4, uh, 2133 speed ECC memory, and a 512 gigabyte M.2 NVMe drive, as well as a terabyte mechanical drive for mass storage. The graphics card on the P500 is going to be the Quadro M5000, uh, 8 gigabyte GDDR5 ECC memory on that. So the main um, Takeaway on that, the M5000 is essentially a quadro version of the GTX 980. Essentially the same specs, uh, only it's running uh, ECC memory for its VRAM and it runs at a lower uh, clock. It runs around 850 megahertz or so um, versus whatever the 980 was. I think it was like a 1100 or something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the benchmark numbers. Uh, the first thing I did was Geekbench. I ran Geekbench three times on CPU and three times on OpenCL performance and then averaged the results and this is what we came up with. So as you see in the chart here, um, both, as you see in the chart here, the P50 and the ZBook both came in several hundred points ahead of the P500 in single threaded performance. However, the P500 leaps ahead by several thousand points in the multi-threaded performance, which is no surprise here. Uh, between the two mobile workstations, the P50 does manage to edge out the ZBook uh, by a few points in single threaded performance, whereas the ZBook walks away with the multi threaded advantage. And so, next, we're going to take a look at Geekbench's OpenCL performance test. Uh, so, in Geekbench OpenCL, both the mobile workstations, the ZBook 15 and the P50, uh, score within a couple hundred points of each other or so, um, and they both hit about half of what the P500 workstation can do. So, the next test I ran was Cinebench. Uh, so, in this one, I ran single A multi core test did each of those five times over and then average the results. And if you look here, we'll see um, both the, again, both the mobile workstations are able to walk away with the single threaded performance prize and the P500, the full size workstation, handily walks away with multi-threaded performance. Um, the ZBook did come out a little bit ahead of the P50 on single threaded performance, only by a couple of points. And same thing with multi-threaded for the P50, uh, it actually took a slight lead in the multi-threaded performance, which is a reversal of what we saw in the Geekbench testing. So up next is going to be the Blender performance test. Uh, so I ran the BMW benchmark test uh, on Blender uh, for the CPU and the GPU for each. And when you look at the results here, um, interestingly enough, the ZBook 15 um, and the P50, you know, GPU was within a couple seconds of, of each other, which is to be expected to run the exact same GPU. Uh, on the CPU rendering test, uh, the ZBook actually lost to the P50 here uh, by roughly 30 seconds or so. I uh, don't know if I should really count that as a win or a loss either way. Uh, I should have run this test multiple times and averaged the results as I did with the others. This one I just ran a single time. Uh, and I have seen in the past the Blender BMW benchmark uh, have a variance of, from run to run of up to a minute uh, in my own testing on other devices. Uh, but if you look at the P500 again, we can see the massive increase in performance going to the desktop platform. GPU render was less than half of that of the GPU render of both the mobile workstations 
and the CPU render uh, was roughly 60% of what it was on the other two workstations. So now into one of the main reasons that someone would want to buy uh, a laptop like this, Autodesk. So first up, uh, we're going to look at Revit 2016. I uh, ran the RFO benchmark on the extended test, which essentially runs the test five times, throws out the highest and lowest score, and then averages the other three. And when we look at this here, uh, first test is going to be model creation and viewing test, which uh, mainly tests the CPU as well as does some testing with the um, storage as well. Uh, this essentially is saving, opening a file, creating it, saving it, reopening it, um, doing different model creation tasks, different viewing tests, uh, rotation, stuff like that. So we can see here that the ZBook came out on top out of everything um, at 399 seconds to do the entire uh, test. And the P50 came in second with the P500 in third. Now the score on the P500 being uh, so much further out from the other two, I attribute to the fact that the P500 was running the test off of its mechanical drive versus the other two were running off of their SSDs, uh, which again, I think is why we have that tiering with the NVMe drive and the ZBook coming in first, the SATA SSD and the P500 coming in second, and the P500 with running this off of a mechanical drive came in last because otherwise um, all their CPUs are fairly close to each other because uh, things like Autodesk are going to rely mostly on single thread performance for these kind of tasks. Which again, the single thread performance deficit could also help explain why the P500 comes in last in this test. So next up we're going to look at the GPU tests that were done on the RFO benchmark. So it's going to do a mental ray and a um, ray tracer uh, render benchmark. And the ZBook 15 comes in dead last on this one, interestingly enough. Uh, the P50 uh, edges out the ZBook um, in the mental ray and then overtakes it by about 10 to 12 seconds in the ray tracer benchmark. And of course the P500 comes ahead of both, ahead of, both of them in this test. Again, the ZBook and the P50 are close enough that I think you could almost call that a draw. Uh, and next we're going to look at AutoCAD. I ran the Catalyst benchmark using AutoCAD 2016. and here we can see that all three score within one to two points of each other on the CPU test and interestingly enough both laptops outperform the P500 in both 2D and 3D graphics again I don't know if this maybe has something to do with the storage solution um, the fact that the tests were run off the mechanical drive on the P500 rather than the um, the NVMe drive uh, but I was a little surprised that the P500 actually came in dead last running uh, the Quadro M5000 so an overall score, we have the ZBook 15 coming in first in AutoCAD, uh, the P50 trailing by only a few points, and the P500 uh, coming in last about at nearly a 60-point deficit from the HP ZBook. And just for giggles, I threw in uh, the Firestrike and Heaven benchmark test. Uh, so Firestrike was run, run at the default presets for each case, and the demo turned off. Uh, so obviously, these things aren't gaming machines. Um, the... P500 fares the best as its Quadro card is essentially a downclocked um, GTX 980, so it does pretty well in all these tests with 10,000 in Firestrike, 5,000 in Firestrike Extreme, and about 2,700 in Firestrike Ultra. I'm um, not getting the detailed numbers here, you guys will see it on the charts on the screen. Uh, both the ZBook 15 and the P50 score uh, within a few points of each other in each of these tests. Uh, not surprisingly, they perform almost exactly the same because these are. GPU bound tests and they run the exact same GPU. Uh, Image in Heaven uh, benchmark was run at 1920 by 1080, ultra settings, normal tessellation, and 8 times anti anti -alias aliasing. I can't talk. And you can see here the again the P500 with the M5000 uh, kind of runs away with the scores here at 120 or 112 max frames per second, average of 59.8, and a minimum of 25.5 or 25.4. And the ZBook and P50 score within a few points of each other, hitting roughly 40, 22, and about 15 frames per second for max, average, and minimum. Alright guys, so hope you enjoyed that video. Hopefully you enjoyed the benchmark testing I did on that and the comparison to a full-size uh, workstation running a, a higher core count Xeon. Uh, I do have a GTX 1080 at work that I can run the test on the P500 with additionally to see what kind of difference it makes. Jump, stepping up from an M5000 Quadro card. 
to a GTX uh, 1080 and comparing the performance difference between those two. The M5000 Quadro card is, uh, when it was new, was about a $1,500 to $1,600 card, whereas the GTX 1080 is a six, you know, five to $600 video card. Uh, so I think it'd be interesting to do a test and see how they compare to each other in these same kind of workstation uh, applications because Again, you're paying that premium for that Quadro card, but are you really getting that much of a performance increase over going with a cheaper uh, GeForce card that could maybe do the same things that it's doing? Uh, so guys, hit that like button if you liked the video, hit the dislike if you didn't. Get subscribed to the channel if you want to see more content like this, and check out some of my other videos. And you can go and follow me on Twitter, at TitoTechTube, and let me know if there's anything else you guys want to check out. Uh, any other like benchmarks like this, like compared the 1080 to the M5000, or I can control, or I can compare the M5000 to, say, my... Uh, GTX 1060, which is roughly equivalent to a GTX 980 in performance. Uh, so guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below or hit me up on Twitter. And until next time, it's Johnny O signing off.